The Wabash and Erie Canal, begun in 1832 and completed in 1853, provided transport from the port city of Toledo, Ohio to Evansville, Indiana on the banks of the Ohio River. Following the success of New York's Erie Canal, several canals sprung up in the western states of Ohio and Indiana. The most ambitious was the Wabash and Erie Canal, which at its completion became the longest canal in U.S. history with a distance of 467 miles. Groundbreaking took place at present-day West Main at the location of where a major feeder canal from a dam on the St. Joseph River provided flowing water to the canal. That was at the highest point, or summit, of the entire canal, earning the city a nickname that still remains, the Summit City. The resulting canal was four foot deep and 40 foot wide at the water line, allowing for the width of two passing boats. The typical canal boat was about 13 foot wide and up to 90 foot in length. Along both sides of the canal were footpaths used by tandem teams of horses or mules to pull the canal boats to their destination. Manufactured goods from the industrial east traveled to the west, while raw materials and agricultural goods traveled to the cities of the east. Before the canal opened, the yearly volume of corn that traveled east was around 5,600 bushels. A mere five years after the canal's opening, that volume increased to an amazing 2.7 million bushels, almost 500 times as much. Despite that impressive increase, the canal was not successful. Instead, saddling the state of Indiana with a sizable debt and driving it to bankruptcy in the 1840s. The emergence of railroads hastened its demise. Early railroads followed similar routes with much faster service than the four mile per hour provided by the canal boats. The canal ceased operations in 1876. Despite its commercial failure, the canal was instrumental in opening Allen County and the entire Wabash River Valley to immigration from the east. Population in the upper Wabash Valley exploded from less than 12,000 to more than 270,000 by 1840. That was of great value to an emerging American nation. However, it was devastating to the Native American population who ceded land to the United States through a series of treaties. That land was in turn sold by the government to help finance the construction of the canal. Ironically, the canal was the transportation used to forcibly remove the Miami nation in 1846. When the canal was sold in 1880 to the New York, Chicago, St. Louis Railroad, its channel through the city of Fort Wayne was filled and rails were laid down for what would become the Nickel Plate Railroad. In the 1950s, those original rails were replaced by an elevation through Fort Wayne that runs from east to west, just south of current Superior Street. This elevation follows the route of the once great canal as it passed through our town.